Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Stephen Anderson, otherwise known as the Profit Doctor, is training us on how to create an elevator pitch that intrigues our listeners. Stephen, I have a couple of get to know you questions. First, sure. when meeting, meeting a person for the first time, why is it so darn difficult to know what to say? Because most people are afraid to speak uh, publicly. And when they're meeting in, let's say, uh, networking events, they really don't know what to say, so they're a little afraid. So I'm gonna eliminate that possibility of being afraid of what to say tonight. Okay, wonderful. That's something we'll look forward to. And my second get to know you question is, what words get the listener to want to hear what you have to say about yourself? Putting your words of what you do in the framework of what the people want to hear. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes. Okay. You have to speak in the listener's talk, not your talk. All right. Well, I don't know what that means, but I'm excited to hear what uh, words of wisdom you have to share with us. Sure. I'm just going to admit all. Uh, audience, if you have a question for Stephen, uh, just type it in the chat. And in the course of Stephen's presentation, I will pose your questions to him. Uh, this uh, training video should be made public up and running on the uh, VBN YouTube channel uh, by, our, by no later than 11 p.m. Uh, this evening. So you won't have very long to wait. Stephen, are you ready to rock the stage? Yep, let me share my screen. Then it's all yours. Take it away. Okay, what we're going to be talking about is intriguing your listener with the right elevator pitch. When you talk about elevator pitch, what comes to mind? Well, the main thing that most people think about an elevator pitch is, what do I say to a stranger that I never met before, and I'm just now thrown into this conversation with him? Most people struggle with that. I'm going to help you overcome that issue for you tonight. What is an elevator pitch? Well, it's the first things you say to an individual that gets them interested in what you have to say. Now, here's what I was talking about earlier. You have to speak in the listener's language, not in your language. And here's what I'm talking about. Are these good examples of elevator pitches? Well, I'm a, someone asks you, well, I'm a security consultant. Does that elicit any kind of emotional response or do you even know what they mean? I'm an accountant or a CPA. I'm a business consultant. I'm an attorney. I'm an investment banker. I sell office equipment. Does any of those elicit a response from you that you want to listen to them? Probably not. And here's the reason why. You ever heard of WIFM? Ah. What's in it for me? What that means is every time you talk with someone, that's all they're thinking about. Why should I listen to this person and what can he do for me? So every time you're thinking about talking with someone or creating a marketing piece, whether it be email or whether it be advertisements of any kind, always think about what's with them, what's in it for me. And you have to create your message for that. Here's some examples. How do I respond to, I'm a security consultant. Does that elicit any kind of uh, response that you're interested in? Well, what if I told you I eliminate your fear in being hacked? Does that give you a better idea? Uh, would you be listening then? And then if they ask, well, how do you do that? Well, we put in safeguards in all of your electronic devices and cell phones. Don't you want to feel safe that your information and private data is not being compromised? So you see what I'm talking about? speak in the language of the listener and what they're wanting to hear, not what you're doing. So don't say I'm a security consultant. 
Okay, here's another example. I'm an accountant CPA. Instead of saying that, we eliminate your fear of having to deal with the IRS. How many people here have a fear of dealing with the IRS? Well, we help businesses take full advantage of all the tax laws that benefit businesses. Is that a lot better than I'm an accountant or CPA? Does that explain better how I'm going to help you as a listener? As a business consultant, I have been a trainer for over 35 years helping small businesses, but here's but I'm but I tell people I'm a business consultant. Does that do anything for you? What if I told you I help businesses and commercial property owners who wants to put more cash in their pockets so they can expand their business, hire more employees, and feel safe that they will survive this pandemic? How does that feel? They ask, how do I do that? Well, I say I eliminate excessive expenses and get them access to little known tax incentives. Are you aware that Amazon.com paid zero taxes last year? And the reason being is because they took advantage of these tax incentives. And I'm going to show businesses how to get access to them, whereby very, very, very few people even know they exist. Here's another example. I'm an attorney. If you're a family attorney, say this. I ease the pain of dealing with your soon-to-be ex-spouse. Or if you're a criminal attorney, say this, I eliminate the stress of dealing with an issue, whatever their issue is being charged with. So you see the differences? Now, another person says, I'm an investment banker. How about I eliminate the fear of not knowing what to invest in to get the most return in your investments? And how do they do that? Well, we invest in high potential businesses to create economic freedom those who need it the most. So you're seeing the central theme of all, all of these? How about I sell office equipment? Well, we eliminate the frustration you feel in dealing with your office equipment. There is a central theme to all of these. Can you figure out what it is? Type it in the chat and see if you can figure it out. Stephen, are you open to a question? Yes. Uh, by the way, you've got a funny little image on the screen that says, please move this window away from the shared something. Yeah, I don't know how it got there. Okay, Gremlin. So a question coming from uh, Neil, why are Canadians more reserved or constrained than Americans when it comes to their elevator pitches? Americans are generally considered to be more assertive than Canadians. I don't have an answer, but I can guess it's the way you guys were brought up. Your general, um, I, I just don't know. That's the only, only explanation I come up with is just the way that you all grew up is different than how we grew up in the United States. I don't know how to explain it any differently. Okay, uh, Chris is concluding that the examples you've just given, what they share in common is that they take away pain points. Yes. No further questions. Okay. Also at the same time, here's the key element. You bring up an emotional feeling about their situation, which includes the pain points. Now, if you focus in on what they are suffering with and tell them you have this specific solution, then they're wanting to listen to you. Now, I would like to offer some individual or two individuals to work with me right now. And if you want to, for me to work with you right now on creating a better elevator pitch, I'll be more than happy to do that. Uh, put in your chat that you'd like to do that, and then Roger will select someone and then unmute yourself. So who would like to volunteer for, for some free live training? Uh, 
Okay, so we've got two individuals. I'll just choose the first two, Maria and uh, Judith. Maria, please unmute. And there's two more volunteers, Stephen, if you should need them. Okay, all right. Maria, oh. just tell me what you do. And... Okay, um, in health and wellness. And so what I was thinking of is uh, I spark joy and making an investment in yourself. Too vague. Too vague. I really don't know what that means. Mm. Just tell me in your own words, without what I taught you today, what you do, then I can help you better. OK. Um, I help people get healthier and also get wealth through residual income. Through what income? Residual. Residual income be more specific what you're talking about. Um, Multi-level marketing. Is that easier to say? Well, I just need to understand what you're doing so I can help you create a better, better elevator pitch. Ah, okay. And I think yeah, that's yeah. what I'm struggling from is uh, to describe in a better way of what I'm doing. Well, that's why I'm here to help you. I need to understand what you do first. Okay, so basic. Okay, so one is, of course, um, getting people healthier to enjoy their lives and have freedom to do what they enjoy. All right, how do you get them healthier? How do you get them healthier? Um, through taking cellular nutrition. Okay, so taking supplements? Taking supplements. Okay. Uh, is that the key element to what you're doing? Yes. Okay. Now, why would people take those supplements? Uh, to feel energized, uh, look youthful, just be, to look and feel better. Okay. Now, using with the last statement, let's reword that into what you're doing and do it where people... Do it in the way that, of what people are thinking about. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Um, what's in it for me? Okay. To enjoy, no, to have more freedom and to enjoy life with the people that matter. Well, that's that's a result you're looking for, the pain yeah. point. Hmm. Why would they take those supplements? To live longer, to be um, pain free. Okay. To eliminate pain. All right, that's getting closer. Okay. Now, what else will these do? Um, I, to eliminate pain, to feel energized and youthful. Okay, now we're getting closer. Now with those in mind, what can you say that you do? I eliminate the, uh, the fear of pain so that you feel energized and youthful. Uh, almost there, almost there. I'd say in a word that I help individuals, start with that. So I help individuals. Keep going. I help individuals uh, take the fear out, or I help individuals eliminate pain to enjoy life feeling energized and useful. Now, how does that feel? Feels better. See? You have to reword what you do in the listener's language. Mm. You understand what I'm saying now? Mm -hmm. So say it again and write it down. Okay. I help people eliminate pain to feel and look better. Oh, now I lost it. First part's correct. Go back to what you said earlier. Okay, I help people eliminate. I help people eliminate pain 
to enjoy life to the fullest, feeling useful and energized. There you go. That's it. Now write that down. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? I help people eliminate pain to feel useful and energized. Wow. How do you do that? For cellular uh, nutrition and supplements. <laughs> so we need to work on that second part. So what we I'll work on it. <laughs> you can ask the this, next person. <laughs> for this person, for this purpose, I'm going to do just the first one. But if you want to go on and do more, you, at the end of this presentation, I'll give my email address and I'll send you a link to my schedule where we can go over this and spend a lot more time doing it, working with you. I'll do it for no charge. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you. So you got a good feel of what, that, what I'm talking about now? Mm hmm All right, great. All right, Roger, who's next? Uh, next would be, wasn't it Judith? Judith, you're next. Yes, but I give, um, I, I give it to the next person, to Larry Fass, because my business is, um, I distribute skincare. Um, and I, I think it's very similar to Maria. I was now thinking I could use like something um, like uh, I am reducing the process of the biggest human fears, aging, or I care for your biggest organ, which is your skin, or something like that. I thought, Stephen. Well, while you're talking, let's, let's look at that further. Now, tell me about the skin care and what does it do? Um, it's uh, totally natural, no chemical. That is like the huge difference. And the ingredients are higher purity and traceable. And um, they, I mean, finally it's cosmetic, you know, <laughs> it's not um, uh, magic, um, but it really helps to, to look healthier and to, to have a, a healthy skin. It's really an organ. So the company Lydia Dinov I represent and is, is focused on the health and functionality of your skin. Okay, now why would women take that? To be beautiful. <laughs> okay, what else? Um, well, today when, when you know to read a little bit more the labels, you see that um, most of the cosmetic um, products do have more um, how you say that, poison and really good elements for your skin. So if, if you're a little bit knowledgeable, um, you never would put certain brands uh, on your organ skin because you basically damage the natural um, behavior of your skin. Okay, but why would women want to take this for any reason? What's the number one reason they do this? Um, beauty. We did research. Beauty. It's not really health. Beauty. People want to look healthy, uh, shiny, uh, without marks or spots or breakouts. Okay. Have you seen any of these uh, other companies that are advertising? What's their number one theme? Um, lifting or... Um, slowing down the degeneration of, of the, the skin and um, your cells, your skin scales. Okay. Say the same thing, but not in medical terms. Say it in. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I help you to, to prevent aging fast. There you go. You're getting close to what I want you to say. And, um, I help women. I help women. Well, also men. Eh? Okay. I, I help people okay. um, to look younger, to look healthier. Well, from a marketing standpoint, you need to say women and women rather than people. Because Pardon? it's more personal. I have men and women. Mm -hmm. Keep going. What do you feel? To look, 
to look longer, healthier, and fresh? Almost there. Almost there. And um, I don't know. Group, help me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, Turn back the clock. Yes. Ah, uh, that's good. Keep on what I said. Okay, I help men and women to turn back the clock. Keep on, that's, that's almost there. Clock. To turn back to, the clock. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Um, the clock and look young, younger. You're almost there, almost there, keep going. And turn back the clock and then um, look many years younger. Okay. Got it. All right now, write that down and then repeat it to me. Okay, got it. I help men and women to look to turn back the clock and look many years younger. There you go. See how more personal that is? Absolutely. And you're speaking in the listener's viewpoint. They're going to ask you, wow, how do you do that? See, the whole purpose of this first sentence is to get them interested further and in asking you, well, how do you do that? Then they're cooked and listening actually to you rather than thinking, well, what's in it for me? They, you just told them what's in it for them. Now they want to know how. I get yes. Stephen, do you want a third uh, volunteer? Sure, as long as we got the time. So, um, well, uh, we've got another 36 minutes. Uh, Marnie, are you up for this? I am, yes. Okay, so Marnie asked the question, how do you get all that info in a short period of time and that the person you are pitching to has the time to listen? So Stephen, Marnie is your next volunteer. To answer that question is you have to say a sentence, the first sentence that gets them interested enough to ask you, stop thinking, will ask you why, oh, how do you do that? Now yeah. the last one, what did she say? What was her new pitch? Oh, um, she um, uh, helps people look, uh, turn the clock. Back. Hers was rather short. Yeah, it doesn't matter how long it is. It just. I have a lot of. <laughs> my, my speech is a little longer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, what did she say you that to... I help many turn women to... turn back yeah. the clock? Yeah, turn back the clock. Yeah. And look many years younger. That was short and sweet, that's for sure. Does that elicit? A question in your mind, well, how do you do that? But then, you see, some, uh, like, I'm a little confused here because how are, how do you go about saying this to someone that they're walking by or what are we doing to, no, to, no, to this is, be able to? This is typically when you get involved in network meetings. As an example, uh, I asked everybody here oh, okay. first, what do they do? And this is a perfect example of a networking meeting. That's good, yeah. Or That's if you later good. on down the road, when we can get back out of this COVID uh, situation, we're meeting people face to face and we're going to business networking meetings. So the whole purpose of this is when you're meeting someone for the first time, regardless okay. of what method, you need to say something that gets them, sparks their uh, thoughts on, well, I want to talk to you. Do that. Okay. okay. That, that, no, right. that clears it up. Yeah. Right. Marnie, tell me what you do. Sorry. What Marnie, you tell me what you do. Oh, I'm a bookkeeper. Okay. No. That's kind of boring. <laughs> well, okay. So, so you're a bookkeeper. Yes, that's right. So now you, I gave you a perfect example of that earlier. Do you remember that? Yes, 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 that's right. But then, um, um, yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah, let's see how it feels. Yeah. Um, like, you I could put that. You don't deal with the IRS, do you? Because you're not doing taxes? Yeah. Well, um, I, I don't really eliminate the fear. That's from one of the accountants work. I um, work with the accountant, right? And I do all the preparation for the accountant um, for the business. To look at something else because this is for a CPA that does, That's right. that does taxes. But I want to show you this as a uh, beginner to think about as a bookkeeper, what are you doing and why do they hire you? Well, in my case, I would say I'm saving them time so they have, I, I would be saving them more time so they can grow their business by taking their financials away from them and working on it on my own. Okay, we're almost there. Now think about it. Okay. What exactly is um, a bookkeeper and what, what's its central duties of a bookkeeper? Basically, entering all the transactions for the client's business, doing all the prep work for the accountant. So you get everything all ready, get everything all entered, and you send it off to the accountant. They have a quick look at it, and then they tell the client how much tax they have to do. So you're taking a very tedious task off the client and also from the accountant. The accountants don't want to have to do that sort of thing. Okay, you just said the important word right there. Tedious task. I take the tedious task. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to say tedious task, but they would say. Well, you I know, know what I'm going to but I'm telling you that's that's a central theme of what we're going to create. I'm going to create more um, time by taking this work from them. I take I give them more time to grow their business, and. Then uh, and also allowing them to see how well their business is doing on a regular basis. Okay, we need to find an emotional element uh, in this and why businesses hire you to do their books. Come up with save them a lot of time. They huh? save a lot of time this way, and they save money as well because the accountant does it. The accountant's going to charge them double what I charge. Uh -oh. Okay. We still haven't found the emotional element that I'm, I know. Uh, <laughs> okay. Why um, in the world would I hire you to do my books? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> um, because I'm going to save you time so that you can grow your business. No, you still haven't found and money. the emotional element. Sorry, what was that? Think about this. Don't think about your elevator pitch. Just answer this question. When individuals hire you as a bookkeeper, what are they telling you is the reason why they're hiring you? Oh, well, basically, they, they don't have time to do that. That's for the reason why they hire me. So if they don't have to do all this or else they're, they're so far behind. They need somebody to catch them, get them caught up. While I'm doing that, they're growing their business. Okay, we need to find an emotional element here. The one oh, I'm looking emotional. for is frustration. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, if you know what, I'll, say, I'll tell you, um, a lot of people uh, find numbers confusing. And uh, they just don't know where to begin. And okay, so by just taking this off their desk or taking this away from them, it's like a big burden taken off their shoulders. Okay, so let's take they a don't look. Know where to begin. Let's take a look at the emotional element of frustration that they have in oh, dealing wow. with their numbers. I help business owners eliminate the frustration of dealing with their financial records. Yeah, okay. I so, hope <laughs> I'm not saying anything about saving time. I'm not saying anything about saving money. I'm talking about the emotional element that they Got feel. It, okay. Yeah. Why they even okay. want to hire you to do their books because they're just <laughs> frustrated, exactly. pulling their hair out. <laughs> what the hell do these numbers mean? I'm getting sick and tired of doing this. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> you see yeah. what I mean? That's the frustration. That's the emotional element you have to pull up when you talk to these people. Okay? I'll write it down and then say it again. 
Okay, let me see. Um, I help remove the frustration of businesses having to work on, uh, I don't know. Deal with all of their financial paperwork. Uh, I help businesses remove the frustration of working with numbers and dealing with, what was that? Dealing with what? <laughs> no, no, take the numbers out. Dealing with financial information. Financial paperwork. As he is better. Yeah, that's true. I exactly. have, say it again. Yep, I have removed frustration of businesses having to deal with this financial paperwork. There you go. That's exactly what you need to say. And that's just that's it. it. Just like that. How does that feel? Yeah, that's short and sweet. That's what you want. That's what you Thank want. You. That's what you want. And then they're going to ask you more about that. If you hit them with an emotional element, which is their frustration, and if they're frustrated, they will listen. Then they're going to ask, well, how in the world do you do that? And say, well, I take care of all of your bookkeeping. Yeah. And when I do that, you can work on your business without having to worry about coming up with all the financial numbers your book, your CPA needs. You see, you take that one step further. Uh, that, that's short and sweet. That's what you want. Get their exactly. attention. Exactly. exactly. You, only have, you only have no more than 15 seconds uh, to say something. How does that feel? You're muted, Marty. Okay. Oh, you're, you're I, th again. I think you've left Marnie speechless. <laughs> okay. Who else would like to go? There's no more volunteers yet. I can go for it. Ashok, take it away. So I, I tell the people when they ask, what do you do? I say, I train people on passive income so they have extra cash in their pocket every month. That's not too bad, but we still need to pull up and create an emotional element. So my, my, my whole purpose of doing that particular sentence is so that they ask, how do you do that? Right, but we still need to create some sort of emotional element in the wording that you say. So how do I, ref how do I refine this particular thing? Well, that's what we're trying to talk about in work together to figure out. Okay, so say that again, what you do? I train people earn passive income so they have extra cash in their pocket every month. Okay, let's reverse that. Okay. I help this, I help individuals put extra cash in their pocket See how more powerful that is? Okay, and? By investing in passive investments. No, I'm not asking them to invest anywhere. Okay, so tell me what, what exactly you're doing. I recruit associates and train them and show them how they can start earning passive income. <clears throat> so you're teaching them how to find passive income or you're actually getting them access to passive income? Yes. Okay. Without then, putting without putting any investment. They have to put some kind of investment to get passive income, don't they? Financial paperwork. <laughs> Well, it, it's like that. You go for a job and you're working in a job, you get active income. But if you establish a system where somebody else is working for you, you get a passive income. So you're building a business there? I'm a building a business there okay, without so putting any investment. Building a business, in business instead of 
investing in passive income instruments. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. So I help individuals generate additional cash. And how would you finish that? That's what I first say. I train people earn passive income so they have extra cash in their pocket every month. No, you're still understanding. <clears throat> you need to put the generate extra cash up front rather than how you do it. I can say it, if I want to put that first, so I say that I help people earn extra cash in their pocket every month yes, by that's training it. them. That's it. That's it. That's it. Stop. They really don't need to know how. All they want to know is what. So leave out the first part and finish and do what you just said without finishing. So you you suggesting I do not make a mention of passive income at all. Not, I didn't say that. I said in the first sentence that you tell them. So can you can you make it more clear because sure. So I help individuals generate additional income to put in their pocket. What was it you said? Okay. Put and more when... cash in their pocket. So I will say, so somebody will ask me how. No, 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 no. Let's back out. Wait, before they ask you how, let's get this first sentence straightened out first. Say that again. I help individuals. I just say I help, help individuals. Yeah. What's the next sentence? Next part of the sentence. Uh, earn passive income. No, do not use the word passive income. I see. So I just say I help individuals earn extra cash in their pocket every month. Generate extra cash in their pocket every month. Okay. That's the first sentence you say, nothing more. Okay. Now say it again. I help individuals generate extra cash in their pocket every month. Here we go. That's it. Nothing more. Okay. So write that down. That's the first thing. Then if you say it right and they are a potential investor, a potential uh, customer for you, then they're going to ask you, well, how do you do that? Then you go into a little bit more details. But you need to get them interested at least to stop thinking about themselves and listening to you. So that's, how, that's the reason why you need to create that sentence. Okay. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you. Okay, try it one more time and let's see how it feels. I help individuals generate extra cash in their pocket every month. There you go. How does that feel to you? It feels very good. Okay. Then if they're interested, they say, well, wow, how do you do that? By teaching you, but tell, then you tell them what you told me by teaching you how to generate a passive income to generate additional income every month. I see. Okay. See what I mean? Not normally when they ask how my next statement to them is let us schedule a meeting and we will discuss about it. Well, you need to say something a little bit more than that. Okay. Then you say, okay. Then the third sentence would be, to find out more about how I can help you, let's schedule a meeting. Okay. So what I'm saying is the second sentence will be something about the passive income. Okay. <clears throat> and jumping right into asking them to set up a meeting to see how I can put more cash in your pocket. So I go with, I help individuals generate extra cash in their pocket every month. And when they say how, I, then I say I train people on passive income. How to get passive income. How to get passive income, okay. And I am providing a free um, discussion on how I can help you put more cash in your pocket. Okay. When's a good time to meet? 
yeah let me let me perfect it and think that will help me a lot thank you so much sure no problem that's what i'm here for do you want another volunteer sure if you got one larry larry you're up okay so i'm uh i'm a software engineer semi-retired and i'm developing a um I help companies develop in-house training to spend their training budgets and um, improve the knowledge of their software developers. So I need to turn that into an elevator pitch. Okay, so you're teaching trainers how to train people on the software, is that what it is? No, I'm, I'm teaching the software developers. So. Uh, Software developers have a lot to learn. Um, and so, you know, another perspective on this is I help turn uh, junior developers into intermediate and intermediate developers into seniors. Um, I help align the, the team so that they have common knowledge so that they're, you know, put it in frustration terms so that they're not disconnected in um, what they know and they can communicate better within the team. Those are some okay, of So you just said one word that we need to focus it on the emotion element, which is what? Uh, the frustration of disconnect. Um, lack of shared knowledge in the team. I think I missed it. No, that's a good start. That's a good start. We have to come with the emotional element first. So let's play around with that a little bit. Okay, I help software, brand new software engineers eliminate the frustration of getting on the fast track of their, of their, the, the, of their career. I mean, this is just something I'm throwing out as a thought to start thinking about it. Sure, so um, I help reduce the frustration of career development for uh, junior developers that uh, you as a that you want to turn into intermediates and seniors these guys need to progress I can help them progress okay instead of saying all of that let's put it into yeah. terms of using the word fast track uh, I fast track your developers up the ladder of software development expertise uh, let's, let's do something first and then put fast track in the middle of it. I help young or uh, not, I help novice software engineers eliminate the stress of fast tracking their career. How about something like that? I help junior software developers uh, eliminate the stress and get on the fast track of their career. Something like that. We still need to work on it, but that's that's the direction I think we need to go. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's good. I I'll, I need to throw some of that stuff in there. I like the getting the emotionality in there early. Yeah, we always have to have some kind of emotional element in the middle of it. I have I have junior engineers eliminate, and again, we need to put the word eliminate in there. The frustration they feel in fast tracking their career. I help junior developers eliminate the frustration of getting on the fast track for their career. Okay. And then they're going to ask you, well, how do you do that? Then you can go into more details. But you need to say something like that to get them interested. And if they are in the software engineering development, organization then they want to listen but if they're not they won't so that's a quick way to tell if they are a prospect or not great thank you see what i mean yeah okay vitaly would like to go next okay <laughs> sure i'll go next so my current pitch is 
I provide engineering managers with mechanical engineering expertise and prototyping capabilities to advance technical projects. So you're a employment agency, is that what it is? Uh, no, I'm a contract mechanical engineer. Okay, so you do the mechanical engineering work for companies and That's you're hiring right. yourself out? That's right. Okay, what specialty? Uh, machine design in particular. Okay, uh, what are some of the emotional elements engineers have in that industry? Uh, so that's that's the hardest part for me. <laughs> the engineers are not too emotional. <laughs> well, think about this. I'm sure you've designed lots of machines, haven't you? Yeah. When you're designing these machines, what kind of feelings are you feeling during that process? Well, satisfaction. That's after it's done. What about during the process? Um, I'd say overwhelmed with complexities. Okay, so overwhelmed is one. What else? Um, it's hard Where to I'm say. looking for, we've used it, numerous ones tonight. Are you implying more of a uh, positive feelings or more of a uh, kind of, a, you know, issues? Uh, that Let me ask you this. Do you ever feel frustrated in designing a machine? Uh, not really, no. Have you tried making a machine do something and it just didn't work? You tried again and it didn't work, tried again and it didn't work? Yeah. Okay, how do you feel during that time? Uh, well, not not frustrated, but uh, I don't know, challenged. <laughs> uh, uh, what would be a better word? Um, under pressure. Under pressure is probably the best one. Well, again, we're going to have to figure out which one is the best for you. But I would think, and I'm not an engineer, but I've done uh, other kinds of businesses where I try and try and try and try and try numerous times, get something done, and I'm just pissed off, frustrated that I can't get it done. So that's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So thinking that uh, during that time you're frustrated because you can't get the right machine to work properly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's just a, just a my viewpoint, mm -hmm. but you're you're the expert on machines, so I don't know. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out an emotional element that we can draw out of the person. I'd say pressure is probably the best uh, way to put it. Feeling under too much pressure. Yeah, mostly because of impeding timelines and uh, the company management uh, has certain expectations uh, in terms of timelines and budgets. So okay, I'd say so. I'd say pressure under pressure is the, the okay, best. So how do you solve that? Well, to to have adequate adequate uh, expertise to to solve this uh, technical issues. What's the reason why these people feel under pressure? Well, typically it's because they lack a certain, like a missing link in expertise or in uh, uh, technical capabilities, perhaps. Okay. So how can we come up with an emotional element for the engineers, even though they don't have much emotion? So how about um, I provide an I provide engineers with uh, uh, mechanical engineering expertise so that they don't feel uh, unnecessary pressure while uh, uh, executing their technical project. Okay. 
How about this? Okay, well, let's reverse this around and put the emotional element first. Okay. I eliminate, and what's the emotional element that the engineers feel? I eliminate pressures. No, I eliminate the feeling of too much pressure. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, keep going with that. So I eliminate feeling of too much pressure, uh, of too much pressures. Uh, Let's back up for a second. We need to identify something a little bit first. Mm -hmm. I help eliminate the pressure engineers, mechanical engineers feel. Okay, go from there. So I help Steve, eliminate. Uh, Stephen, I, I just wanted to do a time check here. How much yeah, more it. content do you have to share with us? This is it, going over and helping individuals do it. Okay. Uh, so I think you need to wrap up with uh, 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 Vitaly in a couple of minutes. And, th and then you've got an offer to make. And yes. that'll, that'll take us to the eight o'clock. Okay. Well, let me do this. For those that, that I talked to tonight, if you want to carry this further and talk a little bit more about fine tuning, uh, more than what we did tonight, uh, here's my email address, tsa at acpmgt.com. And Vitaly, uh, I want to continue this with you. We don't have much time tonight. So go to this email address, send me an email, tell me that you met me tonight, and then I will send you my calendar so we can set up a more time to talk with you one-on-one -on -one and sure. help you fine-tune your um, elevator pitch. This is for anybody tonight or anybody watching the video. Okay. Thank you. Know, you. Everybody enjoyed tonight and got a lot out of it. So, uh, Ingrid, uh, will that arrangement work for you too? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Okay, wonderful. Great. Any questions? There's a question from uh, Neil. Uh, to Stephen, your thoughts on people who use the pitch, I help people to become rich or I help people to become successful. I hate that, says Neil, it sounds corny. Well, it's too broad. There's so many different ways you can do that. You need to be a lot more specific. And if you wanna talk about that in more detail, send me an email and we'll set up a time to talk. Okay, so why don't we um, wrap up now, uh, Stephen? Um, uh, uh, I'd just like to thank you on behalf of VBN. I mean, this has been really enlightening. Uh, with just a little bit of content at the beginning, you were able to massage people's talks such that, uh, uh, such that it, the, the elevator pitch triggered an emotional response. And that of course is how you get people engaged. Exactly. And and you achieved it in one short sentence. There you go. That is That's nothing, the whole purpose of that. That is a miracle. Congratulations. Well done. So allow me to thank you on behalf of all us 17,000 members of uh, VBN and the guests who are here tonight. You sure have uh, lifted a veil. And uh, uh, next time I hear people dropping these paragraph long uh, elevator pitches on me, I know exactly what to do now. You've, uh, you've modeled. Now go to your YouTube channel. Okay, well, indeed. Yeah, perfect. Good. So, uh, Stephen, would you, have you got any last words you'd like to share with us? Any profound closing thoughts? Always think about, and here is the one thing for everybody to really consider this. Whenever you're talking with someone for the first time, that you never met them, or you're sending out marketing messages, it doesn't matter what method, email, direct mail, or any other type,
always think, and matter of fact, what you need to do is get an uh, index card, like I do here, and I put it up on my desk, and I see it all the time, W-I-I-F-M. And it keeps me thinking about, whenever I'm doing marketing messages, what's in it for me. And if you write and talk to these people what's in it for them, then they'll want to listen to you. Beautiful. A very simple but uh, powerful message. Stephen, thank you very much. And audience members, thank you for giving uh, Stephen and I your uh, your uh, uh, Wednesday evening. I'm absolutely certain you got a high return on investment for the time invested. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next uh, Tuesday evening. Good night and thank you. Hi, everybody. You got my email if you want to talk further. All right, have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.